In this video, I'm going to focus a bit on conducting simple main effect analyses in the context of this analysis where there was a significant omnibus main effect for both relationship type as well as IQ level, IQ percentile. So as you know, when there's a significant interaction and you also have significant main effects and you potentially want to interpret the main effects, you have to conduct simple main effect analyses in order to observe that the effect is significant across all levels of the other independent variable and also in the same direction. Now in this case, to be honest, it's a bit of an exercise in futility to try to show that the main effect of relationship type is going to be interpretable. And the reason is that if I isolate these comparisons at each IQ level, which is what I'd be testing for the simple main effects for the relationship type main effect, ultimately the partner relationship type actually crosses the sexual attraction or the sexual relationship only relationship. So it's impossible for the simple main effect analyses to support the omnibus main effect because these two means have switched across so there's no chance of it being in the same direction. Now hypothetically you could end up with a scenario where you don't have the means flipping across and therefore nullifying any possibility of interpreting the main effect. Like these means could have, these black diamonds could have ended up a little bit lower than the green circles. And in that case, maybe I could have interpreted the main effect, but I'd have to do simple main effect analyses across each level to observe a significant effect in the same direction across all seven levels of IQ percentile. So with that being said, I'll still do the simple main effect analyses just to show you how to do them in an efficient way in SPSS. So you'd conduct the analysis just like you would any other time. So click on Analyze, General Linear Model, Repeated Measures. I've already got my factors specified because I've already conducted this 2 by 7 within subjects factorial ANOVA. Click on Define and the variables should still be here because I've already conducted, the, conducted this analysis. and. I'm only going to specify the basics for this analysis so that I can show you and pinpoint you to you the key element of the syntax that needs to be adjusted. And so just like in the previous factorial ANOVAs, I need to click on EM means in order to get that piece of syntax that I can adjust very slightly in order to get the simple main effect analyses. And so in this case, it's really the interaction term because it's going to separate the means in such a way that I can actually isolate across all levels. So if you just put IQ level into display means for, that's really all I need to conduct a simple main effect analysis. Click continue and paste. And here I've got all the syntax to carry out the analysis. Now I haven't specified the plot and I haven't specified effect size and descriptive statistics. So you could do that too if you wanted. But the key piece of information that I need to look at is right here, EM means table, and I need to write compare, and I specify the means that I want to compare, and I want to specify sexual relationship only versus partnership across all seven levels of IQ, so I write type here because that is actually what I want to compare with respect to the means. So if I click on run, SPSS produces all the same output that I received in the previous analysis, plus an extra piece of output, which is this pairwise comparison. So right after the estimated marginal means, SPSS outputs all the tests of the difference between the means. So at IQ level 1, which is the first percentile, which is over here, first percentile, IQ level 1, the difference between the means was equal to 0.91. So it's this mean, 2.463 versus this mean here, 2.173. And that was found to be statistically significant. And it's in the direction of sexual attraction only. So that this mean comparison was statistically significant and it was in favor of sexual relationship only. Now if I keep going, I find that the next one is also statistically significant. One versus two at IQ percentile, this is corresponds to the tenth, it's also significant. So I'm leading up to possibly being able to interpret the main effect. Again, IQ percentile, what does that correspond to? The 25th percentile. And I got a significant effect. And again, it's positive, 0.91. And here in the fourth, 0.154, also significant. 
So again, going up, 50th percentile. I'm still at a significant point. Now things are going to get disrupted. So at the 75th IQ percentile, which corresponds to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the mean difference corresponds to negative 0 0.037, and it wasn't statistically significant. As soon as I see that, I can interpret the main effect of relationship type. And obviously things get worse for the interpretation because now it's turned negative. 1 versus 2 is negative. 1 versus 2 was always positive. So I was sexual relationship versus partnership. It's now flipped over, and it's significant. So the fact that I hit a roadblock here wasn't significant. Now it's significant in the opposite direction. It means I can't interpret the main effect of relationship type. I can't say that one relationship type has a statistically significant effect on desirability in any particular direction. It depends on the type of IQ level that you're looking at, and that's the interaction. Now the other main effect would be IQ level. So is the difference between the means across the IQ levels statistically significant and in the same direction for all comparisons across the two relationships, sexual attraction versus partner attraction? So I'd have to look at this difference in the means and this difference in the means, and then dif this difference in the means and this difference in the means. Is the difference statistically significant and in the same direction? So in this case, it's also going to be problematic because obviously the means start going down here. So I'm, I can't say that a higher IQ is consistently better than a lower IQ because that breaks down over here. Because obviously numerically it's going down. It's not going to be significant in an upward direction. Now, although I know the story is not going to be supportive of the main effect of IQ percentile because simply that there's a numerical drop here, one reason I might want to carry out the simple main effect analyses is to help support the idea that the 90th percentile is, is actually the most desirable IQ level in the population. And the only way I can do that, or the way I can do that rigorously, is to show that the simple main effect analyses are statistically significant from the 75th percentile to the 90th, and also that there's a statistically significant drop from the 90th to the 99th. So, and I'd have to do that in simple main effect analyses in this case to help support the 90th percentile. So this has nothing to do with the main effect. It really has to do with isolating an analysis to help me interpret that actually it peaks at the 90th percentile in a statistically significant way. The main effect is shot. I'm not going to be able to support it just by looking at the pattern in the means. So to get the simple main effects, I really just have to adjust this syntax here. I could copy and paste it and then change the words so that I can get both. So I could copy and paste and then change this to IQ level. So I'm doing both. I'm doing it for IQ level and I'm doing it for type. I just have to copy and paste. But I've already looked at type so I'm going to delete that part because I just want the output to be a little bit more manageable. And click run. And the output is produced again. It's doing the 2 by 7 within subjects factorial ANOVA. And here are my estimated marginal means for type IQ level. And here is the comparisons between all of the levels of IQ. So IQ level 1, which is the lowest first percentile, and the 10th percentile is statistically significant. Negative 0.312 desirability mean difference. So I'm comparing this mean versus this mean. So this mean difference of negative 0.312 corresponds to the difference between this mean and that mean because it's relationship type 1, relationship type 1, IQ level 1, and IQ level 2, IQ level 1, and IQ level 2. So there is a statistically significant increase in desirability going from the first percentile IQ to the tenth percentile. And that is true for both relationship types. If you look at relationship type 2, which corresponds to relationship type 2, corresponds to partnership, 2, partnership, it is also statistically significant. A mean difference of negative 0.267, and it's statistically significant. Now, all the mean differences between IQ level 1 and 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, which is corresponding to the 10th, 25th, 50th, etc. percentile, all of them are statistically significant and all of them are negative. 
So this is supportive of the main effect of IQ level. Same thing goes for partnership. It's always more significant. It's always statistically significant. Comparing this mean against any of the other means suggests that the first percentile yields the statistically significantly lowest mean desirability ratings. Things break down though. At some point it turns positive. So it's not always negative. At some point one of the comparisons in particular turns positive. And the one I'm interested in the most is the 90th and 99th percentile. And obviously that's going down numerically. I don't know if it's statistically significant. So that's 90th and 99th. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 6 and 7. Need to find that in the output. So 6 and 7. Here I've got 6 and here I've got 7. And it's a positive mean because the 90th percentile was 6 and it's statistically significant. And that's for relationship type sexual only. So this mean difference here is statistically significant. Now what about this one? Let's see if that's the case. Relationship type 2, partnership, and 6 versus 7. Also statistically significant, p equal 0 0.008 with a mean difference of 0 0.092. So obviously I can't interpret the main effect of IQ level because it's not going in the same direction and it's even statistically significantly different when I go from the 90th to the 99th it drops in a significant way. And that was a finding for this study is that people do prefer the 90th percentile the most. Now what I haven't done is tested the difference between these two means with the simple main effects. Now I'm not helping to interpret the main effect of IQ level here. That is gone. That's shot. There's no chance of that because the means are dropping here numerically, so that ruined it, and it's even a significant difference. But now I just want to find the difference here. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 5 and 6 mean comparison for both of them. Let's see. Type Relationship type 1, 5 and 6. 5 and 6 is a negative 0 0.107, and it's p equal 0 0.009. Significance 0 0.009. So it's a significant increase from the 5th to the 6th level of IQ, which is 75 to 75th to 90th percentile. Now what about partnership? 5 and 6, also statistically significant. A negative 0 0.202 mean difference and P less than 0 0.001. So I've found that these means are increasing statistically significantly. And I've found that this the 90th percentile is the statistically significantly highest level of desirability when it comes to IQ and that's true for both sexual relationship and partnership based on these data. So that is carrying out the simple main effect analyses. We knew going into it just looking at the plot of the means that neither of the omnibus main effects were going to be interpretable but if you had to carry out the analyses because it wasn't obvious and who knows maybe possible to support the main effects then you would carry out the simple main effects or you could carry out the simple main effects as I did here. The extra bit is that sometimes you're actually interested in one comparison in particular to help support in this case the idea that the 90th percentile is the most attractive.